You are listening to the podcast Rooting Anti-Racism in the Favelas Deconstructing Social Narratives About Racism in Rio de Janeiro Produced by Rio Rio Rio. Rio. On December 31st, 2020, the last day of the year, with almost 2,000 lives lost to COVID-19 in Brazil, 81 leaders from black movements across the country recorded a video manifesto to send their message to the Brazilian people. It is yet another action to confront racism carried out by the Black Coalition for Rights, a political network with advocacy reaching Brazil's National Congress and international forums. The coalition brings together over 150 collectives, institutions, and entities of the Brazilian Black movement today. In the video entitled Manifesto of the Black Coalition for Rights for a Truly Anti-Racist 2021, the coalition states that 2020 will be remembered for each of the lives torn apart by the coronavirus pandemic, as well as for the fight and resistance of the Black movement, which has occupied the public debate like never before. In its two years of existence, the Black Coalition for Rights has been exerting strategic pressure on the national agenda and in public debates against racism and on race in Brazil. It has produced 54 public documents and several mobilizations to confront racism, among them the denunciation of rights violations contained in anti-crime legislative proposals, and the already historic manifesto, as long as there is racism, there will be no democracy. This manifesto is one of the most important documents in the history of the black movement in Brazil. In six months, 59,166 people signed the manifesto in support of the campaign. Among them are 132 signatures of Brazilian personalities, one for each year since the abolition of slavery in Brazil. The Black Coalition for Rights as a political movement is a baobab of voices that unites the points in a long history and present-day articulation of Brazil's Black movement. Voices that, as stated in the manifesto, include the organized Black population, Black women, favela residents, people from urban peripheries, the LGBTQIA plus population, Catholics, evangelicals, those who follow religions of African origins, Quilombolish, who are descendants of enslaved Africans who remain on their ancestral lands, people from the countryside, water and forest, and workers who are exploited, informal, and unemployed. In this podcast episode, we present a small cartography of some of the voices who participate in the coalition. To all of them, we asked, what is your voice and the place of your voice within the Black Coalition for Rights? What you will hear next are direct citations from five coalition participants read in this podcast by a community journalist from Hacinha and four African-American allies who stand in solidarity with the Brazilian anti-racist movement. Born in 1978 and hailing from São Paulo, Douglas Belchior earned a degree in history from the Catholic University of São Paulo. He is co-founder of the Black Coalition for Rights and co-founder of Uniafro Brasil, a network of courses for young people and adults from urban peripheries. I am from an organization called Uniafro. My voice is the fruit of the historical construction of a movement that had objective results for Brazilian society. I am one of those who fought for public policies to ensure access to universities. I graduated amidst the struggle for affirmative action. My training was alongside the black movement accompanying its leaders. Because of that, I consider myself a voice of continuity. I see myself as someone who received his diploma, as they say in the play The Mountaintop by Lázaro do Ramos and Thais Araújo, someone who received the baton from his elders to continue this school of struggle of the organized black movement. It is continuity of work and of political accumulation. I claim my voice in this place, a voice of a black man, 
father of girls and boys, a voice of transition in terms of racial and gender identity. I am a voice that manages to dialogue with older people, providing continuity, and also with this younger generation of black collectives and universities. Perhaps that is why I have taken on a seeming role in the coalition. Hailing from Pelotas in the state of Rio Grande do Sul, Winnie Bueno is a 32-year-old feminist writer and founder of Winiteca, a book distribution program that promotes change against racism. She is also a PhD student in sociology and Yalorixá of Vileaye Orixá Yemanjá. I participate in the Black Coalition from a place and knowledge that is very effective with a history of claiming figures of the Black movement, especially women of the Black movement, in dialogue with social media. My mother took me from the age of six to meetings of the Black movement in the 1990s. I joined the coalition in 2019, representing HENAFU, the National Network of Afro-Brazilian Religions and Health. Despite the discussions of religious racism playing a huge role in my childhood and in my life, I have dialogue with youth. I see my voice as a bridge for an intergenerational dialogue between the younger generation and the more established leaders, the older ones, although I am not so young anymore. The Brazilian Black movement has always had a historical articulation. It has never been passive. It has always been, and it is, active. Claims based on the prospect of democracy that has been inscribed in the national context since 1988, the denunciation of all these systems of domination from the point of view of racism, all this is laid out by the political activity of the Black movement. But there has always been a silencing about this, which is part of and shapes Brazilian racism. Native to Rio de Janeiro, Aniele Franco holds master's degrees in journalism and English from the University of North Carolina in the United States and an undergraduate degree in literature from UERJ, the State University of Rio. Today, she works as a teacher, writer, and lecturer. She is a columnist at web portal UO and is the current director of the Marielle Franco Institute. Since 2018, I see myself in this place in which I feel obligated, not in a bad way, but still obligated, to have a more active voice in what we believe in. When we, the Marielle Franco Institute, joined the coalition, I assume once and for all, the voice that speaks and that tries to inspire other black women to keep going, as we have kept going even in the face of this enormous mourning, this emptiness in our lives after the death of my sister. My voice today represents a large part of this country, but I'm not the only one to represent it because we really inspire many people today. But there is also the other side to it, the hatred. We know that it exists, but we try not to let it carry us away because our voice, the voice of the Marielle Institute, outside and inside of the coalition, is a voice that echoes all over the world. It's a voice of dispute of narratives, of maintenance of histories and legacies, whatever they may be. So I'd say that my voice is on this path of inspiring new leadership in the organized black movement, of making sure that no other fake news appears and tries to kill Maria Leonce again, as they already have done, or to kill any other black body and legacy. My voice as a coalition participant is on the way to show that the more silence there is, the more it hurts us. It's a voice to ring out and frontally combat this racist and unequal system, which insists on erasing who Marielle was, but not only her, which insists on erasing who we are and our roots, erasing where we come from and where we go and can go. A native of São Paulo, Ariovaldo Ramos is an evangelical pastor from the Reformed Christian community of São Paulo. He is the former president of the Brazilian Evangelical Association and one of the founders of the Front of Evangelicals for the Rule of Law. I speak on behalf of a broad collective from this place and group of the Black movement, which is enormous. The majority of Black Brazilians identify as evangelicals, mostly Pentecostals and the majority of evangelicals in Brazil are black. There are more than 8 million of us. This is my place of voice and representation. 
we are in the Black Coalition for Rights because of our big problem, and not only of the black people, but of groups of resistance in Brazil, is that we create a profusion of entities with each one having its own specificities. Although this is positive in one respect, it pulverizes our voice. Separated, our voices do not create the necessary repercussion to enforce the defense of our rights together with state institutions. Our voice loses strength. That is why the coalition is extremely important. It unifies the noise. It reverberates the sound of the black community as a whole, demanding an anti-racist posture by the Brazilian state. It transforms our voices into a power that cannot fail to be heard. This is what the Black Coalition for Rights does. Native to Belém do Pará, Darla Farias is a 32-year-old lawyer and activist in the black movement. She is a member of the Commission on Women and Human Rights of the Brazilian Bar Association in the state of Pará. She is also a member of the Pará Center of Studies and Defense of Blacks, CEDEMPA, and of the Black Shoe Collective Black Amazonian Lesbians of Belém do Pará. Both institutions are part of the Black Coalition for Rights. My voice is that of a black lesbian woman from the Amazon. It is an important voice like all the others, but it becomes important for us to bring to the front because it shows in practice what the black movement always talks about, that we are not homogeneous, but heterogeneous. There are many facets of the fight of the black movement. The representativity that I bring through my speech and body is in fact my territoriality because as an Amazonian woman, I bring the visibility of a black Amazon. We have a self-declared black and brown population of 71.9% here in the Amazon. So my participation in the coalition brings the voice that speaks of this place, of a black cisgender lesbian woman who brings the agenda of sexuality to the discussion for us, also to debate and combat the LGBTQ phobia that still exists in society and within the Black movement. For all of the voices from the Black Coalition for Rights, racism and the lack of racial equality in Brazil are secular. However, beginning in the current government, the racist scenario has advanced in concrete political practices, such as the 2019 funding cut of allocations to Quilombola communities, and the reduction of funding for the program called Confront Racism and Promote Racial Equality. This is why voices of the different black movements in Brazil have entered into a coalition, a political pact, to shout out that with racism there is no democracy and to fight for an anti-racist democracy. As pointed out in the manifesto launched on December 31st, it is necessary that all sectors of society be coherent, and practice what they preach. This episode was produced by the Rio on Watch team. The cover art for this episode is by Raquel Batista. Joseph A. Mills III read Douglas Belchior's quote. Maya Beasley read Winnie Bueno's quote. Michelle Silva read Aniele Franco's quote. Emmett Williams read Ariovaldo Ramos' quote, and Mariah Barber read Darla Farias' quote. Our theme music is by Bij Marx, and sound editing support was provided by Matteo Simões. For more reporting from the Rooting Anti-Racism in Favelas program, go to rioonwatch.org. You will find texts, videos, podcasts, and illustrations that together offer a detailed, multidimensional, and intersectional view of how structural racism works in Rio. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Links are in the episode description. Thanks for listening and see you next time. <laughs>